everyone has a favorite trope, right? That you just love coming across in books. And a little while ago, we asked you guys on the Book Break community tab what your favorite tropes were. And I went through and collected up all of the tropes that got mentioned the most times, and I now have a bunch of book recommendations for you based on those tropes that I think you're going to love. And it goes without saying, just in case it's something that's important to you, some of the books in here you might consider spoilers because there'll be hints about, for example, enemies that are going to turn into lovers. But I actually don't think these are will ruin your enjoyment of the books at all. If anything, I think it's actually more fun going into a book knowing you're going to find one of your favourite tropes. So the most popular trope that you guys said you love is found family. So let's start there. And my first recommendation is a really cute middle grade book, The Orphans of St Halibut's by Sophie Wills. So this is a really funny book about this hilariously quirky group of orphans who have accidentally killed their matron. So now they have to make sure that nobody finds out they are living by themselves at St Halibut's and having an amazing time. So that one comes out in October so hang in there and then coming out in September so you don't have quite so long to wait is another middle grade The Monsters of Rookhaven by Porrick Kenny. So this one is about Mirabelle who is a monster. So she and her family have this spell that protects them from the human world until one day it wears off and then an orphaned brother and sister show up at their house and it's about Mirabelle discovering that this slightly unusual group of people can come together and be a family until something much more sinister shows up to threaten them all. And then for slightly older readers, my third found family recommendation is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. So this is a graphic novel about a girl called Mia who joins this intergalactic space crew who travel through space restoring old buildings and the crew is this really sweet mismatched found family. There are no men, it's mostly women and one non-binary person and Mia as well as joining them on their mission is on her own mission to track down the girl she loves. Okay the second most popular trope you guys said you loved is of course enemies to lovers. So I'm going to start with a really popular romance book that uses this trope The Hating Game by Sally Thorne which is also very excitingly being made into a movie. So this is about two colleagues who hate each other and they play all these games which revolve around just winding each other up but it's also clear from the beginning that as well as hating each other they really fancy each other so that one is a lot of fun. And then in YA we have Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. So Tomi Adeyemi has said that she herself absolutely loves the enemies to lovers trope and her book she wants to try and push it to its extreme by making her characters proper proper enemies and then she actually found it quite a challenge seeing how she would write them back together. So Children of Blood and Bone is the first in her fantasy trilogy that's inspired by West African mythology and these books are so beloved. And then one more enemies to lovers book I'm going to recommend We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. So this is about Zafira who is a hunter who has to disguise herself as a man in order to venture into the cursed forest to find food for her people and Nasir, who is known as the Prince of Death. He's forced to assassinate anyone who defies his father, the Sultan. So they are both legends, even though neither of them want to be. And one day, Nasir is given the order, kill the hunter. Now for everyone who loves the enemies to lovers trope, there are just as many who love the friends to lovers trope. So the first book I'm going to recommend there is Love is for Losers by Vibke Brueggemann. This is such a lovely YA novel. It's also got the found family trope in there, so two for the price of one. This is about a girl called Phoebe who thinks that love is for losers and she's just not interested until she starts volunteering at the charity shop where she meets this girl called Emma. And the book is about their friendship and all of the friends who work at this shop and how it helps Phoebe through this really difficult year that she's facing. She's got her GCSEs and she's also coping with the fact that her mum is working overseas in Syria and keeps losing contact so she's really worried about her. But over the course of the summer Emma and Phoebe's friendship might just blossom into something else. And then for a really sweet moving one, Our Souls at Night by Kent Herreth. This one has actually been adapted into a movie with Robert Redford and Jane Fonda and it's about these two neighbours, Addie and Louie, who have known each other for years. They've lived next door for years, they're both widowed, and it's after decades of knowing each other that their friendship can grow into something else. And then there's Wilder Girls by Rory Power. So this is a dystopian body horror YA novel that has been so hyped up and is so worth it. It is weird and wonderful. This book is set at a boarding school on an island where this mysterious disease called the Tox has infected all of the girls. 
and it's affecting them by changing their bodies in strange ways. And then one of the girls goes missing, so it's up to her friends to rescue her. And this one is kind of a combination of the friends to lovers and the enemies to lovers trope, because this relationship is really complicated the whole way through. Next, a lot of you guys mentioned the Romeo and Juliet trope. So this is in a romance where it's clear from the beginning that the characters want to be together, but for some reason they can't. So I think one that fits this would be The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. So the two women in this book meet when one of them arrives on this island, Vardo, accompanying her new husband, who has been summoned to the island to help deal with the rumours of witchcraft. And the other woman lives on the island and is very much part of this community that's being accused of witchcraft. So not a match made in heaven, you wouldn't think. And then there's The Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. This is a Groundhog Day-esque YA novel about two teenagers called Jack and Kate who meet and fall in love and seem like they're on their way to happily ever after and then Kate dies. But her death sends Jack back to the beginning of this time loop where he can keep starting their relationship over and over but every time Kate dies and he's sent back to the beginning again. So it seems like they're just not meant to be together but Jack is determined to find a way and to find a way to save the girl he loves. And then one more here is The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. So this is a dystopian YA novel. It's set at this fantasy sci-fi theme park, so it's really futuristic. Our protagonist Anna is actually an AI princess who is engineered to make the guests every wish come true. But when she meets one of the park employees, Owen, she starts to feel feelings beyond her programming, and that is never going to go well. A trope that a bunch of you mentioned, and I really agree because I also love this trope, is in a mystery when the detective is sent back to the small town where they used to live, where they hated at the time, in order to solve a mystery. The actress Kristen Ritter from Jessica Jones actually wrote a great book using this trope called Bonfire. So her main character is actually an environmental lawyer who is sent back to her hometown Barrens in Indiana to investigate this huge plastics corporation. And no one really wants to answer her question because this company is kind of the economic heart of the town. But Abby starts to uncover links between the case she's investigating at the moment and a scandal that happened many years earlier when she lived there. Now that trope in general usually makes me think of American small towns, but it doesn't have to be. So for one set in Devon, I'm going to recommend The Long Call by Anne Cleves. So in this one, our detective Matthew Venn is sent back to the really strict evangelical community where he grew up to investigate a murder. A body was found on the beach with the tattoo of an albatross on his neck. And again, this case is going to take Matthew right back into the secrets of his past. And then let's travel again, this time to Australia, for The Dry by Jane Harper. So this book takes our investigator Aaron Fork back to his hometown in the middle of the worst drought they've experienced in a century after three members of a local family have been found brutally murdered. But one of the murdered men was actually Aaron Fork's childhood friend and the two of them shared a secret which now is threatening to come to the surface. Then there's the chosen one trope. So I'm gonna start with actually a really fun subversion of this trope, which is in Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. So Simon Snow is the chosen one at his wizard school, but he's actually a bit of a rubbish wizard. Half the time he can't even get his wands to work. His roommate at their magic school is a vampire and is always making fun of him for being rubbish. So yet another point for the enemies to lovers trope in this one. And the prophecy states that one day someone will come along and try and destroy all magic and that Simon Simon is going to have to be the one to defeat him. And now it seems like that magic eating monster has shown up. Or you might like Uprooted by Naomi Novik. So this is about a young girl living in this rural village which is protected from the dangerous woods nearby by a powerful wizard called the Dragon. But in exchange, every 10 years, he comes and takes one of the girls from the village to be his servant. So of course, in her generation, our main character becomes the chosen one, which is surprising because usually the girl that gets picked is the prettiest, most popular girl. So she wasn't expecting to be chosen. And it turns out she has been chosen to become the apprentice to the dragon and learn his magic. And one more here would be The Lives of Christopher Chant by Diana Wynne-Jones. So this is about a boy who doesn't seem to have any powers, even though his family are all these powerful enchanters. But it turns out that the strange dreams that Christopher has are actually the most powerful magic of all. So he is ordered to journey to Crestomancy Castle and train to control all of the world's magic. 
So no small task then. And then finally, the last trope you guys said you loved is fake dating. And probably the most famous book that uses this trope is To All the Boys of Love Before by Jenny Han. So in this, our protagonist, Lara Jean, writes love letters to all the boys that she falls in love with, but she keeps them all secret until one day somebody posts them out. So this is absolutely mortifying for her, but most embarrassing of all is the fact that she wrote a letter to the boy who became her sister's boyfriend. So to distract from the fact that she has a crush on this guy, Josh, she ends up getting into a fake relationship with the most popular guy in school, Peter Kavinsky. And there are two movies now of the first two books in the series, and I guarantee you will fall head over heels in love with Peter Kavinsky, as perhaps Lara Jean does too. In The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory, the couple Alexa and Drew actually meet in a lift when it gets stuck during a power cut, which just so happens to be on the night before Drew's ex girlfriend's wedding, which he doesn't yet have a plus one for. So Alexa agrees to be his fake date for the wedding, but after the wedding, the two of them just can't stop thinking about each other. And then finally, my last recommendation is a slightly different take on this trope, and that is My Secret YouTube Life by Charlotte Seeger. So this is about a famous vlogger called Lily Loves, who has this seemingly perfect life, including a gorgeous boyfriend. But in real life, she and her boyfriend aren't getting on at all anymore, he's a bit rubbish, and they just keep their relationship going for the sake of the views and all the free stuff that they get. And our other main character in the book, Melissa, is a viewer who uncovers Lily's secret and then has the chance to take her fame for herself. So what do you think? Do you love these tropes? Do you hate them? And do let me know any other recommendations you have that fit into these really popular tropes because we just can't seem to get enough of them. I will link here to a whole playlist of more videos for you to browse through and we will see you next time.